Hi guys, and welcome to Wingnut's Home of Micro Maintenance. You guys have been asking in the comments that you want more detail on some of the things that we're doing. So this is our very first special. Today we got for you is a Sky Ranger that came into us a number of weeks ago. We wanted a full avionics upgrade, but whilst we were here, we had a quick nose uh, and had a look at some of the other things that were going with these aircraft. I hope you enjoy this video. Don't forget to leave messages in the comments below and click that subscribe button if you want to see more specials from wing nuts and micro maintenance. Welcome to Wing Nuts, home of micro maintenance. We are in the first phase, so we've spent the uh, morning just inspecting the plane, seeing if there's any issues that we need to address uh, initially. Uh, we've calibrated the uh, direction indicator, so that's uh, ready to go back in. And basically we're on rip out at the minute, taking out everything that's, that doesn't need to be there anymore and comes with that identification of cables and PTT switches and all the things that we need to reconnect back into the new system. So yeah, a bit brain teasing because obviously they're just black and red cables. So <laughs> trying to find them and identify them, uh, you know, and as you can see, we have a small uh, tidy collection of cable ties there for us to play with. <laughs> we're on putting back. So we cleared out everything that we needed to do. We've identified cables, sourced power for um, the uh, avionics system that we're putting under the seat, which we, if you've seen any of our Facebook channel <laughs> footage, you'll know that we like to do that. We've got the head unit back in, the DI has been recalibrated. We're just reorientating the iPad holder and of course, we uncovered some lovely holes here for us to uh, to try and contend with when we uh, put in that back. So uh, yeah, we're going to put the iPad holder back in. That means that we can then look at putting in the USB uh, auxiliary power supply um, to go in there as well. Again, we just have concerns because although the customer wants it here, we just have concerns that you then you're obviously going to plug something into a USB port. So we don't want the cables to be all around switches. So. Um, this is one of the great things about having um, inspectors as part of the team. We can sit there and go, well, I wouldn't permit that, <laughs> you know. So uh, it, it, uh, it helps that way. So yeah, we're just on putting back. What I'm doing at the minute is we are using the intercom system that's in the trig unit. So I'm just marking up and putting some holes in for the jack connectors uh, for twin GA plugs. What's up, guys? Have a look at this prop shaft. Oh, yeah, fair. <laughs> Rather a state, isn't it? Yeah, see all the corrosion on these nuts. Yep. In fact, there's quite a lot of corrosion all over it. it, uh, it could be the salt atmosphere. Yeah, from yeah, where yeah. It, where it's, it's, uh, this plane's uh, come from a coastal area, so it just rips it bits. But these are. But these need looking at because it bothers me what's in what they're like inside. Right, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to take that off and have a, a close look. Yeah, come look on this side here. Lots of corrosion all the way around there. See the, uh... Oh, Charlie's going to be upset. <laughs> you there, just like, no. It's going all right. Pressure's on. Uh, um, always nice to actually deliver when someone says, "Can you do this?" and you go, "Yeah, not a problem." And then there's a million things else that come along. But we're moving forwards in the right direction. You know, we're we're uh, halfway through day one. Um, come up and against no snags. We've been able to do a few little of the niceties that we wanted to do. So yeah, yeah, I'm happy how it's going. Is it meeting up to the expectations you had beforehand? Uh, yeah, I mean the trig stuff's awesome. You know, I mean, we um, 
we became trig dealers for a reason it's just the best stuff not only to install but it's just really easy to use and so when it comes to putting in a, in a system like this and, and fitting it into a, a, an aircraft like a Sky Ranger, Christ you couldn't ask for any better. Sky Ranger is a really easy to work on, very easily accessible and trig stuff couldn't be any simpler to work and fit so yeah yeah as in what I was expecting this morning um, you know nothing spiderless, not yet, not yet. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's been a bit of a challenge. I mean, not in a case of sitting there going, screaming out and going, what on earth have you presented me with here? But it's an old plane, so there's been lots of mods that have been done to it over the years, and there's been varying things that have been changed and adapted. One of the nightmares that we've had, obviously, with any home-built aircraft and the wiring side of things, is the inconsistency of cables. So obviously, most a lot of aviation cables tend to be white and labelled up, which when you then have a bunch of white cables, it's which one's which. In here we have a scenario where it's switching from, you know, blue cables to black cables, and then there's red and blue cables, and so, you know, there's a lot of inconsistency on a lot of the wiring, which is just typical of a, of a uh, aircraft that's been built for a while and owned for a while. So. A lot of trying to work out where things are going, but we're getting there, you know. We've got main cables in, we've got the um, intercom systems in there, get just about run to power, so we've got the radio uh, up and running. So hopefully by the end of today, we can get the power in. Um, the radio should be all squared away. And then all we've got to do is hardwire the ADSB into the transponder, pop in two aerials for the pilot to wear, and uh, we're done on the avionics. Right, so we're on day two. Mark, what have we got you on today? Well, back finishing off the avionics. So um, we just now we did all the dry fit yesterday, making sure all cables were the right lengths. So now what we're doing is manuals, making sure that we got the right pinouts. So the ADSB unit was had to be moved. Um, into the centre console area, so yeah, it's just a matter of just powering it up, uh, doing some tests. Alan's done a fantastic board. Uh, we can get the aerials in now through the skin, so yeah, it's gonna be a busy afternoon. <laughs> Great, check it back in a little bit. Thank you. As you can see, we've got all the avionics uh, system all set up there. That's fantastic. Now we're just getting some aerials in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to relocate the transponder aerial so that it's to the centre and a little bit more to the rear and I have certain OCDs which I can only apologise in advance <laughs> so we're taking out this baking tray it's been used as a ground plane very ingenious and we're replacing this with a uh, micro maintenance, uh, very light aircraft aluminium uh, ground plate. So, this is going to pop in there. And we've got three of these to go in one for the transponder and one for each of the uh, pilot aware areas. What's what we're getting there? <laughs> well, we are just plugging everything in so we're all connected up. And one of our famous underseat boards in. Mm -hmm. I'm looking good. Fantastic. What do I do? What do I do? Hey, Shelly. So, I noticed you've brought out the Sky Ranger with the intention of doing a quick run check. What is it you are hoping to find out? Have you found anything weird so far? Um, well, it's uh, it's having a it's supposed to be having a hundred hour service. So, um, one of the things that I personally always like to do is uh, run it first before I touch it. So, the first thing that I've done is I've I, I've ignored the I've ignored the aircraft and um, I've gone to the logbook and checked through the logbook and it's sort of getting a flavour of its service history that it's had before and uh, also checked the service bulletins because it's very easy to just go and dive straight into the engine but then realise that there's, especially if this is an old, much older engine and there's a lot of service bulletins that I may not see if I'm not aware of them that could be causing issues that then I'll own the problems of those as soon as I attack it with a spanner. So I've gone through the paperwork side and now I've just done a normal pre-flight check as if uh, as if I would do if I was going to fly it um, uh, and just to see if there's any things that maybe um, may cause it to run differently to what I'd expect um, on its first run. 
and so things that I have some things that I have found um, I don't know whether you can see so the um, a lot of the sky rangers they're fitted as uh, some are fitted with like aftermarket idle cockpit idle adjusters on the throttle but this one isn't it's got a um, it's got the standard just flat plate down here and uh, if I bring the throttle all the way back the throttle doesn't touch that flat plate and um, what that means is that the idle position is set on the carburettors here and um, so if I move the throttle forward and then bring it back you see this throttle arm is contacting against the little idle stop screw and that in itself is fine it just means that uh, you have to make sure that these screws are both set in exactly the same place on both carburettors to make sure they're balanced properly but what happens is when pilots are coming in high on the final approach and um, maybe they're trying to get the aircraft to come down faster than, it's, than it wants to the tendency for a pilot is to, I need, I need to get the power off and they hold the throttle back in the cockpit and don't realise that they're bending the arms on the throttle on the, co on, on, on the carburettors so um and you see this you can actually see there's a witness mark on the top of the on the top of the plate so the, the the preferred method for setting up these is that the idle is set on the idle on the idle in the cockpit back there and uh, these screws on the carburettors are raised away so there's never any damage there's never any risk of damaging the carbs and another common thing is um if you go around this side, the uh, these little vent tubes are really important on the uh, on the carburettors, and this one has been arranged in the standard way for Rotax. It's been um, fed through the clip. But you see how long this one is. That's a standard length. On this side, a common thing for Sky Rangers is that this uh, this hose that comes out of the coolant expansion bottle tends to sit really really close to the side of the carburettor and it sits on the side that vent um, that vent tube should be and that tube will either sit so close that it crushes the vent tube so this carburettor can't breathe and it runs differently to this one so you get rough running or what these guys have done you can't see it probably but they've um, they've cut they've cut that, uh, that vent tube shorter and then they've pointed it backwards so if any fuel came out of it, it would go backwards but because they've got one short vent tube and one long vent tube they can potentially be seeing different pressures inside the carburettors which in itself can cause the carburettors to run slightly out of balance but you'd never know why so there's a few, there's a few things that depending on how it runs I may be able to go, ah this could be because of such and such. I'll go in and do the service, and then when I come to run it again, I'll go, ah, that's running differently now because I've done this, that, and the other. And um, I've got a nice progression from my first start to, <laughs> rather than never running it in the first place and going, oh my God, what is it doing? Is that something that I've done? <laughs> oh, okay, awesome, so you've got so a fair a, few bits to watch for as you go along. It's a preparation thing, mental preparation, and uh, it's, making friends with them <laughs> they've, they, they, they've all they've all got little stories and this one's had a uh, lovely lovely life by the sea and um, you can see it's a it's got a little bit of uh, quite a lot of corrosion on it caused by the caused by the salt these little uh, exhaust lock nuts they cost like one pound 25 or something like that really not very much but these are a pain for they, they really like to seize onto these studs and um, there's always a potential if the exhaust moves um, the exhaust can start eating into the cylinder head in a way that you don't want it to and just a brand new cylinder head costs two thousand pounds and that's without the labor of fitting it so oh for the price of every so often replacing these little guys and um, cleaning the studs off you can potentially save yourself a two thousand pound bill on a new head <laughs> so these will be uh, should be coming off and uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll give it a go at starting. Awesome. Oh, this one's having it's having more work done on it as well. So this one's got no seats in it. So uh, I've tied it up, so it means I can start it standing next to it, and I can 
look at the engine without any risk of it ending up taking off on its own. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. And clear prop. Clear prop! We had the plane in, uh, plane flew in on Sunday. We knew we had Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to work on the plane, and a huge list of um, can you do these. Uh, the downside is that a cold front is moving through, and uh, it's due to hit where the destination is at midday. So we went from having Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to having Monday, Tuesday. So we worked late last night right. to get the plane <laughs> squared away um, but there is an entire paperwork exercise that needs to be done in order for us to release the plane um, of which the pilot the owner wants to get away uh, ASAP so we printed out a small tree this morning um, just bring the logbook up to date so that Alan can finish off his inspection and we can release the plane back to its owner. Are we going to drain the tank? Oh God, yeah, that was we something else. To. Sorry, forgot all about that as well. The other thing we also need to do is weigh the plane. So um, we're gonna, uh, I say we, it's a royal we, we're gonna drain the tanks down, get it down to its basic weight, pop it on some scales and get it ready for its um, official weighing. But yeah, I really, I really, really appreciate uh, you coming up to us. It's a long way to come. And, uh, if you've got to fly, you might as well mix it in with other things. And well, yeah, yeah, if in doubt. But yeah, yeah it was, uh, really do appreciate that. Really. Like I say, I'm very, very, very grateful. Um, and, and I hope we see you again. And you will be.